Hey guys, welcome to our new show, the Crypto Dojo News Network. We are going to be bringing you, uh, hopefully on a weekly basis, all the crypto happenings around the globe and uh, news updates. We're just going to be letting you know our insights on that and everything we sort of have to, to, you know, our opinions on things. We sort of feel like there's a bit of a blank spot in the industry right now from people who actually know what they're talking about. Uh, and especially moving into the next couple of years uh, of the bull market, uh, I think there's going to be a massive gap for something like this. So we want to bring you guys, uh, you know, a quick, short and sharp show, usually about 20 to 30 minutes once a week to just give you guys all the updates and everything you need to know about what's happening in the industry and hopefully give you a little bit of extra alpha to help you guys with your uh, trading journey. So with me, I have Critty and Romps, who are the two partners uh, of the Crypto Dojo Discord community. So welcome, guys. Thanks, Mike. Good, uh, good to be on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're going to be covering off uh, major news articles at the moment. The first one uh, is the Coinbase telling the SEC it no longer thinks crypto is the future of finance. And basically, on this one's a little bit funny, but uh, at the, the, the moment, Coinbase is having, you know, the, a big fight with the SEC and there's a lot of, you know, legal battles going backwards and forwards. So one of the angles that they've taken at the moment is to say that cryptocurrency uh, aren't securities and they're more uh, like beanie babies or trading cards, which is a massive backflip to basically what their mission and uh, vision has been uh, pretty much for the life of the company. So that is an interesting uh, turn of phrase that they've been sort of moving towards to sort of uh, try and fight uh, the constant onslaught from uh, Gary Gensler and the SEC. What are your thoughts on that, boys? Uh, like always, market manipulation, I reckon. I, I, I always just think they're just as crypto is taken more seriously and as this, the adoption phase kicks in, um, I just think we're always going to have this pressure uh, that they need to, they realize that this is a more serious thing. So they need to work quicker to create regulation, that sort of thing before it gets out of hand and, and they lose control of it. Because at the end of the day, these governments want centralization and obviously these crypto coins, they grow and they're giving you know people um, the power to be able to, take on their finances without centralized authority. Um, I, I just think it's just another one of those FUD moments pretty much. Definitely. Yeah, spot on. Agree with Romps there, mate. Yeah, nice. We have another um, point, another little uh, point to cover on this in a second as well. Joe Rogan uh, covers it off and we're going to play that video in a second. But yeah, it's definitely uh, a battle at the moment, I think, for the actual future of finance. Is it going to be centralized or decentralized? Uh, so we might just quickly jump to that because we've got a little video here for you guys. Bitcoin Magazine posted this uh, and it's just a clip from Joe Rogan uh, having a chat with Post Malone. Hopefully... Hopefully, you guys will be able to hear this. No, I don't think there's any sound, man. That is fucking sad because if they apply that to social credit score, they decide somehow or another to use some social credit score system in the benefit of society. And they outline that they can, you know, track your behavior and tweets and all these things. You get a, a score. And if you're still in that, they they just haven't released the fucking report card. Well, they, they don't have the time. They haven't sent the report. They didn't send the report cards home to the fans yet. Man. It's already it's everything's already in print. But everything's already tracked. Everything's already there. But they just haven't given that big copy. They scroll you to the same extent they would like. And what they would like to do is is really strip your money. Do the locking down, and then make sure that you comply. So that all the other people also comply because they don't want to be stripped of their money. They don't want everything they work for to just be taken away yeah. instantly overnight and be powerless. No one to call. No one's going to answer your phone. They just decided you fucked up and the rules are the rules. And so then where does that money go? Who takes your money? Who takes – and that, that's what they – when people start profiting off of confiscating people's digital currency, it's going to be a real fucking problem. Well, people well, – it's not all fucking – yeah, but the idea of them controlling all of the money. And it's all unilateral. Yeah, it's all the same fucking thing. It's all thing. the same fucking thing. That's, that's the problem. And here's the, here's, the, here's the problem I think. 
think that people are going to do this? Who would be the most? So first of all, lads, <laughs> the number one takeaway from that is I am shocked with how knowledgeable Post Malone is on central bank digital currencies mm. and the financial system. And the second question to you boys is, are we on a trajectory to end up like China with a social credit score, with the government controlling all of our activities through our bank accounts, through central bank digital currency? Or do you think that uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin decentralization is going to end up winning? Um, I think basically if you look at it from the outside of crypto, look at Dan Andrews' government down in Victoria, basically, we can see he actually has ties with China already and we're actually the testing ground here in Australia to implement um, basically a digital ID, which they're talking about in mainstream media that we will actually have digital IDs. You can look at how they, we won't get political on COVID, but how they basically rolled out uh, to see how much people would comply and basically we have those MyGov accounts now that actually show um, vaccine and, and certain medical um, data they have over us. So I think, as you said, this ties in with uh, Coinbase with how like they, they're going to try and make, they're going to try and slow down the adoption phase so they can regulate it because they realise, if you sort of look at it from the outside, it sounds to me like it wasn't taken serious for so long and, you know, oh, it's beanie babies, it's what they're calling it. But deep down, they actually truly know that financial freedom is there. If you can be a self uh, custodian to yourself using a trees or a piece of hardware. And, you know, a lot of these dinosaurs, these boomers that are in, um, you know, from the, in the second stuff, they, I remember watching things within the last year where they'll say something along the lines of like, Oh, like, like where's, where's the building that has Bitcoin? Where's the managers? How do we talk to the CEO of Bitcoin? So these people for a very long time just thought, Oh, this is just some sort of offshore institute that we can just we can just squash at one point or another. And then you say Genesis block to them and all of a sudden they're like, it's a Genesis block. And they Google it and they go, holy fuck, this is so much bigger than I thought it was. And then they realize basically what Bitcoin is. And, and I think because of that and, you know, the, uh, the DeFi and everything that's coming in now, they're realizing that hell, like everything was going to plan, but we've just been ignoring this thing over on the side here that could really basically interrupt um, if we want to look at it from a conspiracy sort of a way, complete world domination and look at the World Economic Forum and stuff, not right. for this podcast, maybe another podcast, but anyone who knows what what's going on over there as well, it's all a big interruption to it. So I think every single time you see, you know, the SEC or whoever jumping down, say, Coinbase's throat, it's actually in itself saying they're scared, they're worried at the potential of crypto because it really wasn't a threat. They'll just go, whatever, it's going to crush itself. So they're making it a really big deal. And I think there's a really big shift going on at the moment in the political spectrum, especially in the US. I'm not sure if you guys follow US politics as closely as me. Obviously, you know, lived there for many years of my life. But um, there's a big shift at the moment. A lot of the dinosaur politicians are getting quite old in terms mm. of the fact, like, you know, these people are going to be dead soon. Um, you know, a lot of them are in their mid 80s, right? Yep. And there's a new wave of politicians. All of the um, all of the presidential candidates at the moment are coming up a, a lot younger. You know, you look at Vivek, who's in his 40s, I'm pretty sure. DeSantis in his 40s as well. Um, even RFK is a little bit younger. I think he's like early 60s. Obviously, Trump is a little bit older. And Biden is the number one dinosaur. I think he's like 80, 83 or something. He's going to be 84 next year or something ridiculous like that. Um, you know, and all of these people are going to end up having dem dementia. And so we're having this new wave of, you know, fresher, younger minds come in. And a lot of them are really supportive of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and self-sovereignty. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long, you know, the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab and all of those, you know, people who want that authoritarian domination of the world yeah. are going to be able to last. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if like the, if democracy actually works and we have this new age of thought coming through from all of these leaders, uh, unless they rig the election again, but um, <laughs> I would, I would love to see, I would love to see RFK uh, get through and become the next president because he's really pro Bitcoin. I think he's bringing a good mindset to, um, to the leadership of the world that's desperately needed right now. But what are your thoughts, Critty? Are we, uh, are we heading well, look, it's back or? It's a it's a good subject to talk about actually because I reckon you know ask me eighteen months ago and I'll be like what as if you know <laughs> what I mean but like oh, yeah. 
with the the events on the world stage over the last 18 months, three years even, you could say, it's 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 well and alive, man. Like you I I I asked me 18 months ago, I'm like, Rob, go put your tin fat tin hat tin foil hat on, man. You know yeah. what I mean? But now yeah. it's just like we got Post Malone on Joe Rogan and it looks like the biggest crackhead in the world at the moment. We're doing these ones. And Smoking we all agree it. with him, you know? Yeah. Like it's yeah. as weird as it is. And it's not just us. It's just not guys talking in crypto chat rooms and on the internet. It's like you said, politicians are get, getting right in involved in this, um, disagreeing, agreeing. So, yeah, we really have to think about really think about the moving forward into the future with this shit and where do we stand? I and, think if you, we look at Elon Musk, thankfully, with Twitter, now X, I think if yeah. we look at that, that's the real reason why we're getting this information. So, you know, you'd be easy to say, oh, tinfoil hat when we had Meta suppressing information and coming up fact-checked. And then we find out that Meta got sued, basically, because the fact-checkers were opinions rather than yeah. facts. So we can start seeing the corruption through the lies. And basically the front of, you know, what would be a conspiracy theory that's now turning into fact has just basically been hidden behind this big tech wall and someone like uh, someone like Elon Musk is a basic basic hero, um, mm-hmm. revealing basically the Twitter files and that sort of thing, which is starting to make people go, "Hang on, these conspiracy theorists they might not be as crazy as we once thought they were, and the world is more fucked up than we would like to believe." Basically, yeah. But the, the hardest thing there too, I think, just with um, mainstream media, man, they could just crush X as well. Like you don't hear much on the news and the radio about what's going on on Twitter and stuff like that, especially boomers. I think, I think, all on boom, the I think that's stuff. the thing. I think boomers still get fed by the radio and and, and the mainstream media. Mm, as you know, when you're a kid, you put the telly on or you listen to the ABC and mm. you just you take what you hear as fact and, and, and you know, the information's, it's, it's, that's what it is. It is what it is. But I think now all of us young people, we question a lot more and we go into Twitter and then, you know, we're finding several different opinions and angles and and. and yeah. We we were able to make our own opinion based on our experiences. I guess the issue I think that's what scares Twitter, them the most. It is, but mm. there is still an issue, and this is me not being a conspiracy theorist. Is we get into these echo chambers, we mm. follow people that we like to listen to, and yeah. someone else's account could be completely different with different facts. So I think echo chambers is basically the risk that we have with how we source our, our information. Yeah, definitely. Just on what you were saying about. Um, Twitter, I just grabbed a quick article then actually sort of came out this morning or overnight in the US that Twitter was just fined $350,000 for taking too long to hand over Donald Trump's Twitter account to the DOJ. Basically, Elon gave them the middle finger and told them to get bent, which is uh, interesting. You know, what you were saying about how we're getting access to this information now because of Elon. uh, And I agree with you, like it's definitely created a shift in the trajectory that we're going on. And this is a perfect example here. Yeah, so this aligned with the Coinbase. Like, I guess Coinbase is just your number one American. You know, it's always America, Hollywood, you know, everything's always based around America. And when you look at Coinbase, an attack on Coinbase is basically a direct attack on crypto. Um, You know, at least from a boomer standpoint, you know, they probably use Coinbase more than say Binance, you know. and at the end of the day, like the wealth in people our age and younger is so small compared to boomers, obviously. So we still need that wealth at the top to actually be able to shift these markets at the moment. Because, yeah, you know, us kids can talk all day long about like, going, you know, putting a whole account on 100x. We're not going to shift the market. But some of these boomers out there, um, obviously their gateway would be Coinbase. Like, I, Hence watching Coinbase spot a lot of the time because mm-hmm. that's when the, and CME, that's when the big boys come in and actually start moving the market. Well, um, the boomers so, will really come into the market when the spot ETF opens up. Absolutely. And I think, I think so. So I, I kind of keep repeating myself, but the fact that, you know, they're going to be trying to basically say, oh, crypto is just going to crumble and it's weak and all this and that and the other is because boomers still listen to mainstream media. So they're going to go, well, that's what they're saying about it. I'm not going to put my money in that. But what it actually is, is they now realize they can't they can't squash it. They can't control it. But what they can do is try and hurt it, if that makes sense. So they're going to try and go, look, this is a system that exists. We need to basically create regulations, 
for onboarding, for regulations of actually people being that like self custodian, basically, because we need to make, is it going to be illegal? Like China made it illegal. What we need to do is this system exists, but how can we regulate this before it gets out of hand, lead it basically like cattle and basically get it to a point where we can align it with CBDCs. Mm. And then we, we, we once again have regained control over crypto. So I think it's, they've got to continually bag, bag it out to buy them time to sit around the big table and go, fuck, how, how do we do this? Like, how do we act? What, what's the action plan? What's the procedure to do this? They're definitely reaching for some sort of control. And I'm just not sure if they're going to end up getting it. They will have some control to some extent, but uh, I think once it's decentralized world, you know, they'll try and track all the wallets and everything like that. But I think they have to sort of come to the terms with, they're not going to be able to control every single thing. Yeah. I think it, it, there's in, inherent, you know, human absolute need for freedom and we've seen that throughout all of human history right and people will always find a way to have freedom and even if they do try and install uh you know central bank digital currency someone will come up with a way to hide a transfer of monetary value from the government in like like in, and replace what cash is just a digital version of cash you know we sort of have bitcoin but it's kind of public at the moment but eventually People will find a way because they inherently crave freedom. But let's keep moving. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. we get stuck on that for the whole time. But uh, next point of uh, news was uh, PayPal's regulated stablecoin is a watershed moment in crypto. Uh, basically, PayPal has partnered with Paxos and they're going to be making a stablecoin called PYUSD. And uh, this is going to be the first regulated stablecoin uh, from a global payments company, which is massive. PayPal is actually 50% of all online transactions because we were talking just before about eBay and all that sort of stuff. And most people use PayPal to pay on Amazon and everything like that. PayPal is definitely the dominance payment processor for the internet. So them basically, um, you know, originally back in 2017 and stuff, it was always like crypto versus PayPal. And I sort of feel like we've got to that moment where they've stopped fighting us. They've stopped fighting crypto and now they've decided to join uh, join crypto. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on that, boys, on I PayPal think, making think the jump? As you said, it could be really massive that like, you know, I've run several websites over time that will accept PayPal as just basically a really, really simple uh, way for anybody to make a blog site and be able to sell some merchandise or whatever. And for them to uh, sort of having the same issue at the moment, trying to find some like a good way to onboard uh, for our own Discord, how to onboard crypto and people pay with their crypto to get membership. And I think if you had the ability that PayPal offers at the moment, which is, as I said, any blog can basically whack on a, a PayPal Express thing and people can just come in and, and use their PayPal account connected to their cards. I think it's going to be really, really big on the front of any little person will be able to now accept crypto in so many different industries. Because if, if it does go the way I'm thinking where they can go through and when they click on pay with PayPal, it will, I, I'm curious to see if it's going to just be, you know, pay with your account pay with a Visa debit MasterCard or also pay with your crypto because mm -hmm. they're going to have that that connected to it. So I, I think that's that's something that I'll be I'll be curious to see if this really also helps with the adoption of crypto, but not just that, but actually giving crypto more of a purpose than just DGENs trading it back and forth, but actually allowing the system to start flowing and actual e-commerce happening with actual crypto. Definitely agree, man. And I mean, everybody was talking about last cycle, you know, the super cycle, this is going to be the real adoption cycle, but we never really actually saw any real adoption. There was a little bit with like the lightning network and Jack Maulers and all that sort of stuff, like, you know, doing partnerships with all like the big brands like Macy's and stuff like that in the US to get, you know, you can pay with lightning network off your Bitcoin wallet on your phone at like Starbucks and all that sort of stuff. Like that, it's that was still, really as far as we really got with adoption. It's but I still think very nerd based though Pardon? like it's very nerd based if you were to say to your average mate at the gym oh mate just go and buy a coffee with a lightning network with bitcoin they'll be like <laughs> oh you say hey mate you can now just pay with paypal with your crypto yeah, yeah. exactly you know it's, I, know, it's I know how to do that 
my, it's a, my man to do that, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a massive, yeah. I mean, and PayPal has been dabbling in the cryptocurrency industry for a while now, actually. Uh, I think mm. it's almost been a year they've been involved where you could actually hold Bitcoin and Ethereum in your PayPal account. Now, yeah. you, they they only just recently, I think it was only like two, three months ago that they enabled withdrawals of um, cryptocurrency from your PayPal account. So previously, you could only just buy it with your money on paypal transfer it mm -hmm. across uh, and i think you could send it to p other people on the paypal network but you couldn't take it from paypal and send it to you know an exchange like binance or bing x or ibit or something they so like basically that. centralized it in a way it was just centralized yeah. yeah but they they have actually um upgraded their network so you can do a withdrawal system now okay um and so i think this is their next step in really integrating with the cryptocurrency uh industry and yeah, sort of like realigning their their value systems, but being like more anti crypto. We're going to fight against you. We're Swift Network, Mastercard, and like you said, um, you know, because the, the next point that we're going to talk about actually is um, the Commonwealth Bank and mm. uh, basically them limiting people to only being able to transact with a thousand dollars per month, which is a big thing that people have been talking about in our community. Uh, and so I think, you know, potentially PayPal, if people can just put money onto their PayPal account and then transfer okay. that to PYUSD and then send that to an exchange, like that's going to be huge, I think, um, for, you know, getting around this issue that we're having with the banks. And in fairness to the banks, they're closing down everybody's accounts and not letting them send to cryptocurrency exchanges because the, a lot of people, especially the boomers we were talking about before, they are getting scammed and then they're blaming it on the banks and the banks are having to do recalls and stuff like that and they can't get that money back and then they have to refund because, you know, the bank, your bank account has basically I insurance think, on it almost. I think this, like, there was a time I sent 100000 out of my business account over. So I don't completely agree with that in itself because I sent $100,000 over um, and they locked my account. Mm. And so I, I rung up the fraud squad and said, yeah, it's me. I'm sending it to Binance. And they were basically, like, having a go at me. I I'd, I'd bought a $100,000 car basically a week ago and the lady on the phone was because I'd up my limit. She was congratulating me. Oh, well done. Great to see your business is going well. Then these guys were fucking having a go at me. Mm. Going like, oh, you know, you're sending money there, you know, like you can get scanned and stuff. But they basically gave me a questionnaire that they recorded online. Like, I understand that I won't get this money back if I lose it. I understand that there's scams in crypto. I understand that it's going out of Australia into this basically, I can't get it back is what they're doing. So they didn't let that with they didn't let that deposit go through until I basically had a recording of me stating that I was willing to lose that money. Yeah. So at the same time, like I feel like it's just a front to say to everyone, oh, hey, this is what's happening. Mm. But realistically, if any large amount was happening, sure, maybe a few thousand bucks, and that's a lot of money for some people. And maybe that's why enough little little ones is annoying them. But mm. like for a, for a, if someone's sending a large amount of money over, like you shouldn't just be, because I'm hearing people get their, they're losing their accounts and stuff. Like it should just be ring them up and basically just say, hey, do you know what you're doing? Yes, I do. Basically check the boxes, sign here, off you go. That money's gone. It's not our problem. You can't have a gold as if you lose it. That was actually my experience. Uh, I, I was banking with Westpac and I made a, a large transaction they, to Binance as well. And they called me and they were like, oh, you know, we're calling you to make sure you're not getting scammed. You're not under duress to send this to anybody. Yeah. Are you being advised by anybody that knows what they're doing? And I was like, well, yeah, myself, That that's what I do. That's my job. Yeah, and yeah. They, were like, they were like, oh, okay, cool. And then from then on, I've never had an issue. I haven't mm. sent any, any capital out of my bank account for a while now that was at the start of this year but i'm not 100 percent sure so like just my understanding of the finance world um because i come from a, a finance economics background Ooh. is in my opinion what's happening in australia th there's two sides right there's like the side where they're like we don't want to lose our deposits because the bank needs the deposits right that's like their how the bank manages how they're performing right the more deposits they have the more healthy the bank is deemed that's right the and then the second part is they're trying to resolve themselves from any responsibility if you do get scammed because there is a lot of people who are actually losing money and then they go back to the bank and they go, well, you need to refill that money in my account. What are you going to do about it? I'm your bank customer. You didn't protect me. And then mm. they try and sue the bank, right? So 
I'm not 100% sold that it's just the banks, um, you know, trying to block cryptocurrency from growing. But I think there's probably definitely uh, some part to that uh, for sure. So I, I think don't... you can also look that, you know, it'd be interesting if, if PayPal will accept, like, so for instance, you can't just send it to, to Binance or to, to you know, QCoin or, or OKX, wherever you're sending it. You can't do that anymore. Coin, coin Spot, CoinJar, they, they kill all them but then they will accept PayPal. And then do you have the article up where somebody went through and looked at the PHP code of PayPal? And they're basically- oh, I don't have that, but I can probably grab it. Give me a yeah, second. Yeah, they, they basically found that uh, there's a nice little bit of code in there that they can just pretty much seize your account straight away. And PayPal has been known over the last few years. Uh, they are going to, they backtrack very quickly, but they were going to fine people, I think 2,500 USD for misinformation that, you know, mm. on their political stance of misinformation. They've also um, just, they've, they've just, I think they got sued by three people over the last year or two for basically just locking them out of their funds. Uh, another case I read, somebody turned out being under the age of 18, so they held onto their money until they are 18 years old and then sent them a check. So their PayPal has been known to just take your money. Um, and something else that I'm a little bit wary of is, you know, Binance have got a pretty good... Um, withdraw and deposit uh, fee but you know like in my own business if i'm getting paid by someone the other day i got paid by someone 250 us dollars they took 50 bucks off me as a fee wow yeah who did that mate paypal did the fees is the fees are just astronomical on paypal so i personally Mm. if the fees reflect the same in say a crypto exchange they make I would say the fees are going to be absolutely stupid, but people will pay it because of the user experience and the onboarding experience. Like they're familiar with PayPal. They know PayPal will pay them back if something goes wrong. So they're just going to pay probably the highest premium out there. But we're yet to see that. That's all just, you know. Do so people actually yeah. keep their money on PayPal? Is that is that common or not? Yeah, I think they they I think I think they do. Like, you know, if I get paid in there, sometimes I just deliberately leave it in there and then, mm. you know, like because then who knows, I'm probably going to buy something off the internet. It's just a yeah. real quick way to come straight back out again. Yeah. But so I've got to say, PayPal. This is the code. Yeah, that's the one. So, yeah, it's basically a bit of a bit of code there that they can just click a button and all your, all your, if you want to, if you want to store your crypto on PayPal in the future, they can just lock it up just like any central bank could. And that just completely goes against crypto. Um, Dax and I have discussed before about like there's a lot of people boomers and a lot of people who aren't great on computers where self being a self um, custodian of like your actual custodian of your actual crypto probably isn't a good thing for you Um, if you're somebody who doesn't know what they're doing and you have sent to the wrong address and you've literally just lost your life savings Mm -hmm. um, you know but at the same time um, that sort of was the purpose of crypto like educate like it's, it's the same as cash like you wouldn't take you know, ten thousand dollars worth of cash and leave it out in your letterbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because that's like a friend asked asked me the other day about hardware wallets, and he has he's never even dabbled into crypto. And I said, mate, I can hook you up with one or whatever, but yeah. just know if it's on there and you put it in your safe or or you lose it or or something like that, it's gone. The there's, there's, down. There's one. There's one more fact to that though. It's not mm. the hardware wallet. It's the seeds. It's the secret. Yeah. The secret They're tech. true, yeah, yeah. So if you so something I've done, so I've, I have two copies, and I've memorized a certain numerical number that's on one of the words that's in here, and my missus knows. So if you found that list of my trees up, you've got one word that you won't get on it. So I have that extra security. But yeah, yeah like I treat my trees up and my 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 words like they hid, they're basically hidden away somewhere. So I treat it yeah. the same. If I had millions of dollars sitting in the house or under a mattress, like it's it's hidden away. Yeah. yeah. If I had a better better memory, I'd try and remember every single secret, <laughs> secret word. And you can just buy a new trees up and you can put those words in and, and it, it reboots that account. Yeah. Let's keep yeah. moving though, lads. We're gonna cover off yeah. inflation. Uh we do have CPI coming out tonight. So 
for uh, headline CPI, uh, the previous is 3%, which is actually quite a large drop from 3.9, almost a full percentage point drop. Uh, consensus from the street is 3.3 for tonight. And the forecast was actually 3.1. So because of seasonality, uh, we're actually going to be, it's August right now, right? We're going to be getting the July numbers tonight. Uh, July, typically you see an uptick in inflation for like food and beverage and hotels and all that sort of stuff, because mm -hmm. everybody is out holidaying in the U S spending money. You know, it's the middle of summer uh, over there, right? Everyone's flying to Miami and partying down there. So, you know, you see a lot, more of an uptick anyway just due to seasonality so we actually might see a little bit of a bump the stock market has actually responded pretty aggressively to this and has been selling off for pretty much the last week and a half um, some stocks are even down about 25 percent just in the last few days um, so I, I'm not sure if this has already been priced in or not. Crypto mm -hmm. at the moment doesn't really seem to care. We're still just flat sideways um, but mm -hmm. I will show you a little bit of data here on trueflation. Uh, we've sort of been going sideways. Trueflation got down to about 2.4 on the 15th of June, and it's sort of been going a little bit sideways. End of July actually dropped all the way down to its low, almost 2%, 2.08%. Uh, and it's sort of sitting around 2.37. So we sort of like started almost entering what you would consider if you're trading this market in an accumulation range, right? Or maybe it's just another bear flag. But um. Anyway, regardless, during July, we did have a little bit of an uptick and also the start of August, which, you know, isn't, um, you know, you know, it's not un, un, uncommon to see that, right? And we can see here in the food and beverage statistics uh, during June, that actually rose quite a lot. We were at minus 9% uh, year over year um, and moved all the way up by the end of August to plus 4.2. So it's a pretty big swing uh, through there. And that was from food away from home. Food at home also climbed and food and non-alcoholic beverages also climbed throughout June, July, August. So it's already started to come down from middle of August. And I would expect that to normalize again. And that's just sort of a seasonal bump. But if we look at housing, that's straight down. Transport sort of like sideways, uh, a little bit of an uptick through here um, throughout July, August. Uh, if we look at utilities, that's absolutely crashing healthcare costs is crashing where you know just under uh well zero percent right uh household and daily items still quite high around 5.71 alcohol and tobacco uh around the five percent mark but that's pretty much been sideways for the entire year clothing not too bad communications uh pretty flat at just above one percent uh education still hanging around uh high twos recreation and culture around uh, around the fours but you know that's sort of another one that's sort of been sideways as well but the big ones um to watch uh household and daily items i wish that they actually had in this list um a, a, oh no, we do have so rented dwellings here. So we have a split between housing and rents. So rents have actually been quite low uh, for a while now, 0.33. Uh, but yeah, this is the main one for core inflation, which is the general metric that uh, the the, so I was going to say the SEC, we've been talking about them so much, but the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell is the main one that they're watching here, core inflation rate, because core um, takes longer to come down, right? So we want to see even if uh, headline, which is this one here, headline year on year, even if that does peak up a little bit, we want to see core inflation come down. And that would be really positive for all markets, because if this ends up coming out higher, like in the fives, and this comes up in the mid threes, uh, then that means that the Federal Reserve is probably going to have to raise rates again uh, in the next uh, FOMC. And that means that they're probably going to have to hold them up higher for longer. And the higher they have to hold rates up for longer just adds to extra risk that we're going to end up having that hard landing where we, something does eventually break in 2024. But you know, the thing is, everybody's always been talking about something's going to break in 2023. When we're in 2022, everyone was saying, oh, there's going to be a big recession in 2023. You know, the Fed's going to keep raising rates until something breaks and the whole market's going to crash. And we're going to have this really bad recession. And that hasn't happened. Inflation's come down. Uh, unemployment is still super low. And then, uh, you know, now the whole year, everybody's been saying, oh, in 2024, there's going to be this huge crash because the Fed's going to have to leave up interest rates for so long and blah, blah, blah. And sometime in 2024, there's going to be a huge recession. 
Um, but yeah, I'm yet to see the data in giving actual indication of that. Probably one of the only people that I've seen on the ball uh, about this is Tom Lee and he's been long all year and he absolutely nailed the bottom and made a lot of money for his fund. And one of the things that he brought up the other day was there's still $5.5 trillion of USD sitting in brokerage accounts waiting to enter the market right now, which is a massive amount of capital. And one of the things I think most people are overlooking is the fact that they added an extra 40% of all currency to the market over COVID in just two years. So that's obviously going to affect the market. And I believe that's why we did have two quarters of negative growth in 2022, but we didn't actually have unemployment start to take off, which is why they claimed that we didn't have a recession, even though we technically had a recession, right? Yeah. Any comments on that, please? Can you just go back to that true inflation stuff, mate, and just yep. explain who who is this and where do they get the data from? Yeah, so true inflation is just basically a um, a bunch of economists, and basically they've come out and said, look, the Federal Reserve is always off, and they're about three months behind. So mm -hmm. the true inflation numbers are generally about two to three months ahead of where the Federal Reserve was, and that's been fairly accurate all year actually. So we will, we, you know, the whole year we've been looking at these true inflation numbers and you know watching inflation come down, and then you know you'd be in January or something like that, and the Federal Reserve have been okay. You know, now we're at like eight percent. And, um, you know, they, they, it's end up being quite accurate to being about between two to three months behind the Federal Reserve numbers because the Federal Reserve, the way that they process the information and everything like that, by the time the data actually comes to being reported on, you're actually three months behind. So um, the people of True Inflation, they got a little bit annoyed with that. It seems to be uh, something that a lot of the industry are actually aware of. Um, so yeah, now that this is becoming more popular, the Federal Reserve has actually sort of been speeding up their processes. And you know, some people are now arguing that it's only about a month to a month and a half ahead of the Fed now. Instead of it, typically most of the year, it's been about three months ahead. Um, so yeah, True Inflation, great website. Definitely go check it out. You can read all about them. Um, you know, through here, their white paper about us, the developers, where they get the information from, all that sort of stuff through there. If you want to do a little bit more digging into that, but yeah, really good economic uh, resource, that's for sure. And definitely can help you sort of see ahead into the future because investing into stocks, um, you know, and even in cryptocurrency and everything like that, it's all about what's happening in the future. It's not about what's happening right now. Uh, so yeah, it's important to understand where the market is going to be trading in three months time in six months time from now, instead of where it's trading right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, should we Good keep rap moving? On that, mate. Pardon? Good wrap on that, mate. Yeah, not too bad. Um, the other one as well, yeah, which is pretty interesting is uh, Sophie, which is a new bank. Uh, social finance, basically, uh, out of San Francisco, they actually are holding, uh, what is it, 6.2 million customers, uh, and they're revealing they're holding $82 million of Bitcoin on their balance sheet uh, and $55 million of Ethereum and also a host of other um, cryptocurrencies through there. So like what we were talking about before, we're starting to see a little bit more adoption into, you know, the traditional market uh, companies, mm. that's for sure, around um, around cryptocurrency actually sort of starting to bleed into that. And, you know, we sort of touched on a little bit before, but this could actually be the real adoption cycle with the ETF and everything like that. Yeah, exactly. We're sort of running out low on time, but we'll quickly cover off this one, uh, the Curve Finance incident, where basically the founder of Curve, uh, Michael Egregov, uh, basically had a $100 million um debt backed by over 400 million CRV tokens. And people sort of started to pick up on this and the he was sort of got very close to being liquidated and uh, people were trying to sort of attack the curve protocol and Aave actually had a fair dump off this as well because they were under pressure for doing the loan as well. But basically what he did is he took a whole heap of curve tokens, put them into Aave protocol and then got $100 million out and he bought a, house, a ridiculous house with it somewhere in the US. Um, I was here in Australia. Oh, sorry, it was in Australia. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah, he was under a lot of pressure um, to sell, uh, you know, to basically refinance that loan because it was dropping in value. We were talking about this earlier today and how, you know, we were saying, you know, 
crypto loans, uh, you know, a great idea if you do it at the start of a bull market, you do it in the lows yes. like right now, right? Because then you get to take advantage of your tokens, whatever it is, Bitcoin curve, or whatever altcoin it is going up in value. Uh, but if you get a crypto loan at the top of the market cycle, a couple of my right. friends did. One of my friends actually did that in the middle where Bitcoin was like $45,000. He put his Bitcoin into one of the protocols. I think it was Aave as well. And he got a loan out uh, and bought an apartment with it. And then obviously, you know, Bitcoin crashed all the way down to $15,000 and he ended up getting liquidated on his loan and lost his Bitcoin and all this you know, horrible stuff happened to him. But uh, yeah, basically that's the risk if you're using a highly volatile uh, currency as your collateral for the loan. So what are your thoughts on that, lads? I just don't know how these guys sleep at night to tell you the truth, hey? Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's got a different... Um, you know, risk allowance and what they, you know, but for me, I'm a little too conservative to be doing stuff like that. Like as Dak said, if I'm, if I were to take out a loan and I'll, you know, like everyone's been bearish for months and prices are a pullback 80%, then I might consider it. But still like the size of these loans that these guys take, how much risk they inherit, like, you know, I'll take a small high level trade. And if I don't have a stop loss on, I won't sleep at night. I'll be dreaming about getting liquidated. And that would just be like, cute money compared to these guys. I don't know how they have this open loan and they've gone and, you know, bought a mansion with it. And they're basically sitting in this giant house, sleeping at night, just hoping that it it plays out, hoping there's not going to be a black swan event that comes and sends them to, to brokey level. Hey, it's crazy. These guys obviously have big balls. That's for sure. One of my oh. friends actually, um, he took out a loan he put put Bitcoin into a loan and borrowed like, I think it was like $350,000 or something like that to buy more Bitcoin when in the middle of the bear market, when BTC just before the FTX crash and all that sort of stuff oh, happened. Um, yeah, it was actually pretty insane to be honest, but he, he's a massive Bitcoin whale, but I was still just like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. But if, if, if he's a good trader, he could have been. Sorry, Critty, what did you say? If if he was a good trader, he could have been in and out of trades and and paid for that, you know, before before you know yeah, it. Exactly. Just, this guy know. can't trade at all, though. That's why. Oh, well, there you go. I, 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 a I massive know. loan in the middle of a bear market just before a fifty percent dump. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I know a few, a few NFT guys and a few guys that have no idea how to trade, and they're always, you know, getting up me about trading and just, you know, oh yeah, rah rah rah. But at the same time, like. This just goes out to everyone who's watching this right now. Like, I highly recommend, even if you don't have the time to sit around and DJ and you prefer to, you know, go out and do normal people things, just spend spend a bit of time just to learn how to how to navigate those fifteen minute time frames because everything's fractalized. So, you know, you might spend time, weeks, a few months learning it, know how to do it. Still not your cup of tea. That's cool. But when you do zoom back out and you're just staring at that daily twelve hour chart. Mm. it's exactly the same rule so do i take a loan here you look at it and go no no i don't take a loan here <laughs> that's all you have to do honestly exactly exactly protect your capital mate rule protect number one and two hey Rob. Rule number one and two that's exactly so yeah, great right. time to plug the crypto dojo that's for sure come into the crypto dojo which is uh, discord backslash uh, discord.gg backslash bitcoin and we will uh we will teach you how to trade so yeah they eventually ended up a whole heap of whales came in justin sun was one of them as well yeah, nice. and they bailed it out and uh he, he ended up refinancing that loan and took the pressure off curve and then yeah curve actually bounced 22 percent after that uh so yeah well, they that's sold it pretty... at 40 cents and i think it's current value is 60 60 cents yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Mm. Probably the last topic we'll talk about tonight though, guys, is uh, Aptos rises 11.6% was actually up 20% overnight at one point after they did a partnership deal uh, with Microsoft, which is pretty big. So we're starting to see more and more of this stuff of, you know, these real world companies, PayPal, Microsoft, Google, you know, with Solana, uh, you know, getting more and more involved in the cryptocurrency network. And, you know, I, I, that's why I believe that this is actually the you know the super cycle coming up over the next couple of years once the, the the real economy actually bottoms and we have the federal reserve sort of roll over back into um back into stimulus phase and they're worried about e employment and the economy again instead of inflation i think that's when the you know the crypto industry is really going to take off and really thrive because there's just so much going on 
if you compare what's happening right now to what was happening in 2019, like it's night and day. Like people would only ever dream about a Microsoft um, deal with a blockchain company, but they're doing a whole heap of stuff to do with AI. And uh, basically, Aptos Labs is partnering with Microsoft to unlock Web3 on the Aptos network. So you can use uh, MS Partner uh, to join the suite. Oops. That's my bad. To join the suite of tools will offer by developers and users around the world with effortless access to Web3. So yeah, exciting mm -hmm. times. That's why Aptos had that big pump, which we can see uh, here. Decent retracement on it though, but uh, this is one of the coins I actually don't mind. I think it has a decent upside to it. Uh, It'll run hard cycle. in the bull market. Yeah, well. Yeah, you, you seem to like this one. Is there anything you want to share with the guys about it that you like? I know nothing about it really, mate, to be honest. All I know is AI tick at the moment and yeah. it's and it's a newer coin that hasn't seen a um hasn't seen a proper bull run mate so get all of it go get around it that's it and what, what crit is talking about guys if you're a bit new to the industry is that typically in the new cycles it's the newer coins that run really hard so i think a couple of narratives definitely to keep your eye on uh you know things like the zk swaps the zero knowledge swaps and all that sort of stuff uh those uh protocols definitely something to keep your eye on because i think those will run pretty hard but aptos is another one of them op we've been talking a little bit about as well mm. um you know they just partnered with base so yeah some of those newer protocols are the ones to keep your eyes on so yeah any other comments boys we'll wrap it up there basically just just it's just a thought i had is it funny in one hand you've got these big companies coming in right and you've got these sophie a fresh bank coming in they're accumulating large you know large amounts of bitcoin and and they're doing crazy things and in this hand you've got our local banks and you've got the american government basically calling crypto beanie babies come on guys connect the dots what's mm. going on they're trying to keep us out of crypto at the moment while the big guys can come in and accumulate because guess what they just learned there's only going to be 21 million bitcoin <laughs> they can't print they're not used to this wait what you can't print more <laughs> stop these people buying bitcoin stop these hundred thousand dollar orders going in we mm. need to accumulate as much as possible and then we've got black cock i mean black rock sorry coming in <laughs> to buy to, to have a spot etf yeah so yeah. Wake Bitcoin up, guys! And, Wake and they up. will sell the fake Bitcoin to all the boomers, and then they'll Paper. lock it from them because it's not self custody. <laughs> Paper. That's right. That's it. So, and then yeah. it's a scam again. It's a scam. Look, we always, I always have that one guy. The moment we hit the bull market, comes back to me and he goes, "I thought crypto was dead. I just saw on on the finance section of Channel Seven, Bitcoin's ran again. Do I buy? <laughs> and I'm already loading up shorts at this point." Always happens. Yeah, that's yeah. It. we've all got that one, so mate. Just wait Every till cycle. they crypto is dead, like when it crashes, and start accumulating. That's yeah. it. That's it. You get a few. I told you so, and you just give him a little smirk. Yeah, <laughs> and you, just, you just cruise off in your Lambo. <laughs> I well, well, want to wrap it up there, guys. Today, lads. Uh, yeah, we better well. wrap it up there because we'll definitely run over time. But yeah, thanks a lot for everybody for joining. If you're still here, to make sure you check out the crypto dojo.trade is our website. You can join our community. Uh, we do have a free course in there if you want to learn how to trade. Some really great information from all three of us in there. So thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. And uh, we'll see you all next week. See you later. Thanks, guys.